Yes. I'll, I'll just say yes to this image. It says Gen Z is gay. Okay. Uh, if that's what you want. <laughs> I wonder how many Gen Z people watching this are like, no, no, we aren't. All right. Welcome to, um, I don't know. What is it? 4 p.m. We have this story from the Daily Mail, which is uh, factually incorrect, and I can prove it. This article says that Gen Z is the gayest generation we've seen so far, and that is actually true. But it goes on to say that Christianity is on the decline. It's actually not true because there's disputed sources. What we're actually seeing with these competing political sources is that hyperpolarization is taking over Gen Z and will only get worse with the coming generations. That being said, one counter to that argument is that Gen Z leftists don't have kids because they're gay. They're less likely to have kids. They're more likely to abort. And thus, the rise in Christianity may actually persist. And my prediction is that the future of this country will be a Christian conservative nation because they have kids. Now I know. Many people make the argument, they say, no, Tim, you're wrong because the left indoctrinates. Indoctrination works only to a certain degree. That is, the amount of children raised by their parents who can be indoctrinated against their, their parents' views is lower than the total production of children produced by these parents. So let me put it this way. If you have 10 children, only maybe two or three can be indoctrinated, but conservatives are winning the majority of this through teaching their own kids and instilling their values and, and basically controlling what their kids can see and, and, and think and hear as they should to a certain degree. As the kids get older, you give, more, you give the kids uh, more freedom and things like this. But here's the story from the Daily Mail. The 41 million Gen Z voters who will decide the 2024 election are by far the most LGBTQ cohort to date. And they're ditching Christianity conservatism in the GOP survey. Fully 28% of Gen Zers are LGBTQ compared to 4% of boomers. Quote, it's over for white Christian male hegemony in the U.S., says trans academic. I encourage them to continue to believe this and to live in that reality because they will lose. From Christianity Today in a story from last year, where boomer faith in God is low, Gen Z belief is up. Now, the reason why I said I could disprove that article is because conflicting sources exist. You can Google it all across the board and they'll say Christianity is up, it's down, and they will choose the metrics they so desire to make that claim. And while it may be true that among most groups, Christianity is down among Gen Z, it's up. Donald Trump has now three, I believe, three different polls showing he is winning the youth vote. It's so serious that Democrats, according to Vox, are panicking. Typically, I reserve the Democrats panic articles to, uh, you know, anti-woke and, and anti-Democrat YouTube channels. Democrats panic over this. But Vox, a liberal publication, is saying they're panicking over youth voters going to the Republican Party. But how can this be? Well, you need to understand that if you are LGBTQ, there is no guarantee that you're a leftist. There's a strong probability. I'd say the overwhelming majority of LGBTQ people are going to lean left. But you still have some. You have many uh, uh, gay people, for instance, who are voting for Donald Trump. So that doesn't really mean much these days. They're going to say a public religion research institute survey shows that Gen Zers who were born between 97 and, 12, and 2012 are the most racially, ethnically and sexually diverse and progressive generation to date. Alejandra Caraballo, a Harvard academic and male to female trans influencer, so the survey showed that it's over for white Christian male hegemony in the United States. I do not believe that is correct. I believe it is actually quite incorrect. But of course, people who are biased want to claim they're winning. They're desperate to assert that they, in fact, are the right side of history. But I think when you take a look at the holistic picture, it's just propaganda. Time for an egalitarian and equitable society, she posted on threads. Well, unfortunately, egalitarian and equitable are, uh, that's an oxymoronic statement. Egalitarian is more so the equal treatment of people. Equitable means the forced leveling of the playing field, which would be detriment to people based on, you know, their natural merit or things like that. Equity is a bad thing. I suppose equity in your house is a good thing. Social equity is a manipulation where they say, 
we got to cut off the tall grass. Understand this about forced equity. Equality is I have a job. Anyone may apply. Equity is because there are too many people who look like you, you can't apply for my job. I'll give you a better example. In the leftist world, most of you probably know this. You have a a, a college and the college says, you know what? We've realized too many Asians are coming to the school. Okay. my response is I want you to look into the eyes of that seven year old impoverished Asian child on the south side of Chicago and say, you don't get to go to Harvard because you look too much like they do. Who cares? Who cares how a person looks? That's the world they live in. Equity would be because you look like them. You are not allowed to come to this school. What a horrible, horrifying, nightmarish thing. But equity can only can only be enforced in one direction. You cannot make someone who is stupid smart, but you can bludgeon someone who is smart until they're stupid. You, you get it? Typically, what happens with equity systems is that in order for there to be equity, you have to lower everyone else to a forced standard. Because the people who are the short grass can't be pulled up to the tall grass. Someone who is five feet tall can't compete with someone who's seven feet tall in basketball, based on our, our, our current rules. Now, they can be competitive in certain ways. For sure, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, like, the advantage is with those who are tall. Well, you can't make the short person tall, but you can force the person who is too tall to play on their knees. Forced equity. Oh, well, it's not fair. Now, now they can't move as freely. It's like, well, you know. It's like the, was it Harrison Bergeron? Was that the name of the story? Here's what they say. PRRI survey of more than 6,000 respondents confirms the left-leaning values of Gen Z found by other researchers and sheds new light on their gender and sexual identities and religious habits. It may be true. I think it's fair to say they are the most progressive. But here's what they're not telling you. If they find that 30% of Gen Z is gay, uh, LGBT or whatever, and only 4% of boomers, they can say it's the most gay generation. But what they're omitting is that it's actually a bifurcation. It is not that every single Gen Z person is like, I have this thing. It's that there is a faction emerging, a hyperpolarization. Christianity Today has this. In a recent Ipsos Global Advisor survey of 20,000 adults across 26 countries, they found in nine countries where less than one third of adults believe in God, Gen Z was more likely to hold these convictions than boomers. In Northern and Western Europe, Gen Z was more likely than the boomer generation to say they believe in heaven, supernatural spirits, hell, and the devil. In places like South Africa and India, however, boomers were more likely than Gen Z members to believe in these aspects of the spiritual realm. The point being, we are seeing in many areas an increase in Christianity, and we are seeing a decrease. How could that be possible? Hyperpolarization. The far left is dropping these values and they are circling the wagon around their cult. And younger people are realizing the failures of the boomer generation and they're changing their views. I am not saying the boomers failed as a generation. I am saying they had failures. Every generation does. Gen Z, younger Gen Z people saw what boomers did right and saw what they they did wrong. And they said, we should correct for the wrong things. Now, of course, on the left, it's a cult. Uh, that's it. Have a nice day. Sorry, uh, I'm not interested. People get mad at me and they're like, Tim, when you say it's a cult, how are you actually going to do Look, man, I know it's tough. I know it's tough. But let me, let me tell you. Ben Shapiro debated destiny. Uh, the Daily Wire just tweeted this out. Ben Shapiro defines wokeness and he's like, we have to define it because a lot of people are accused of not defining it properly. And Ben is wrong in his definition of wokeness. My friends, You see, the problem with a lot of conservatives and politicos is that they live in this very esoteric realm. Ben Shapiro defines wokeness as a postmodernist rooted in postmodernism, but it has changed and evolved to incorporate racial issues and things like this. Ben Shapiro is incorrect. In a strict esoteric realm, a component of wokeness does include these things, but the average person does not say woke to mean postmodernist, critical race theory, gender theory, etc. Woke quite literally means adherence to the social orthodoxy of dominant institutions. That's it. Hence, woke people also are pro-war. 
Now the Ukraine flags are gone from their profiles. Woke people are for some reason pro-Palestine. How could it be that Palestine, pro-Palestine people, uh, they're an oppressed people and they're also LGBTQ, but in Palestine, it's 10 years in prison if you're gay? <clears throat> well, part of the postmodernist belief that Ben does uh, nail, he gets this correct, is this view that power structures define everything. And I'm paraphrasing, but basically that if you are in power, you're likely the bad guy. That does not explain Ukraine at all. It doesn't explain why many of the same woke people were cheering for Ukraine. It doesn't explain why Hassan Piker was pro-Ukraine intervention. Why? Now, you can make the argument that Russia is the dominant force and they invaded, but that doesn't really apply because no one really knew what was going on in Ukraine. They blindly waved the flag with having no understanding at all of it. It also doesn't explain why definitions and words change all the time. It's because the reality is, if the, social, if, if the dominant institutions say jump, woke says how high. And thus, it changes quite a bit. Women with a Y is the correct term now, but then someone does Wimixin, women with an X. It just changes from day to day, seemingly for no reason, regardless of who's in power and who's not, whatever benefits the dominant structure. So woke really is a component of a, 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 a moralist dis, uh, dis, uh, institution in disarray. It is a group of people. I'll, I'll describe it like this. It is a flock of birds flying around randomly in the sky. They occupy a certain territory where there are a certain kind of trees, but they're moving around seemingly randomly just following each other. We have no idea what they're doing or where they're going or why they're doing it. That's wokeness. It is just a large group of people running in circles. You know what, you know what it reminds me of? There's this thing you can do with ants. So ants, when they walk, they leave pheromone trails guiding other ants. Actually, let me let me let me pull this up. The ant circle of death. So you can get an actual visual of it for those that are watching. It's a it's a it's an, an ant mill, they call it. The endless circle of death known as the ant mill. Uh, I, I call I, I called it. I always called it a death circle, but I guess they call it an ant mill. Take a look at this for those that are watching. And for those that aren't, I will just uh, have to explain it to you in this. You see an army of ants all running in a circle. And that's that's a deadly game of follow the leader. This is wokeness right here. This is wokeness in uh, incarnate. It's one way to explain it. What we're, what's happening is when the ants leave a pheromone trail, they and they loop around creating a circle, they follow that trail forever. They don't realize that they're running in circles. It's too big of a space. And then they just die. They eventually run out of energy and die. That's wokeness. They're all just following each other, following each other. It makes no sense. Now, of course, there are new ants being injected into the mold, and they will go along with it. New ideas can be injected into the social orthodoxy. That's true. And that's how it's seemingly amorphous and nonsensical. That's why it does incorporate largely postmodernist ideas. But it starts with feminism. It starts with, we want to make video games that are diverse. They create fake outrage for the sake of outrage. They then get mad about the, their own outrage. They are whipping themselves up into a circle of death, chasing down their own nonsense, garbled insanity. This is what wokeness is to the society. I've long described it as this. It's a whirlpool that sucks people in and spins faster and faster. There are people who exist outside of it, curious as to what is going on. It's kind of a wild phenomenon to watch. An ant mill or an ant death spiral. Mother Nature Network says they're blind. They use pheromones to follow the trails. They follow each other and eventually they die. So people actually, some people do this. You trick the ants into running in circles and then it creates the death spiral. And I don't know how effective it is in getting rid of ants, but they will just die. There's no progress. So when these people are saying that, you know, they're the future and whatever, I'm sorry. No, you're you're in a death mill. That's what you are. Christian conservative Gen Zers are going to have kids. Those kids are going to grow up and have kids. They're going to praise family members. They're going to honor thy father and thy mother and all of these things. I'm not saying you should be Christian or you have to be Christian. I'm saying Christians will reproduce. And on the left, they're not going to do these things. They're going to, ro they're going to run themselves in these circles until they cease to exist. Man, it does look. Like in this video, however, the ants do break out. 
But I think it's an important thing to point out about what wokeness is. And I think this image really does exemplify it. The death circle. It can trap them on a path towards their doom. When these ants run in the circle, they have no opportunity to mate and reproduce and they will just die off. That, that, that's what I think is going to happen with the woke left. People on the right aren't stupid enough to fall into these circles of death, though they may have beliefs that are wrong or opinions that are stupid. Many of them do. Saw a commercial the other day on Fox News for your child's guide to Donald Trump. And it was just like the oh, so cringiest thing. It was a commercial. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know. I, I imagine the people who are like running that company, like watch perhaps or something. But it was just like the left lies about Donald Trump. So order your free guide to Donald Trump today. And it was like, learn facts about Donald Trump. And I'm like, guys, please. <laughs> it's too much. I get it. I get it. But come on. I don't think, however, a child that reads the guide to Donald Trump will be trapped in a death spiral the same way woke people will. Woke people are going to sterilize themselves, more likely to, abort their kids, more likely to, and advocate for more policies where they do. What can that become? Now, you argue they'll indoctrinate your kids. Sure, some of your kids are going to get sucked into the death circle. Protect them. Tell them to stay away. But I got to tell you, there's no future for the people who, in, who enforce and live in this ideology where they sterilize themselves and don't have kids. Surrogacy is becoming a big thing. And I understand why the right's so op opposed to it. The left is trying to find ways to procreate. And there are women who are, who are engaged in it. But you know what? I think in the end, it's fairly obvious what we get and what we see. The future is going to be Christian conservative. The idea that the white male hegemony or whatever hegemony is over is just wrong. Because, well, you don't have kids. That's really it. So by all means, do what you want to do. Do what you got to do. I just think it's the important thing to, to, to learn about how you win this one. Building cultural institutions. That's how you defy wokeness, parallel economy. And as Mike Cernovich pointed out a while ago, have a family, make money. That's how you win. People often ask, like, how do you be successful? What do you got to do to be rich and successful? It's not complicated. It really isn't. Keep working on something. I met, uh, I, I met the band Death Cab for Cutie when I was, um, how old was I, like 20, 21? And they were my favorite band at the time. And so I was at this event in uh, uh, Chicago. This uh, nonprofit group told me that if I registered people to vote, I'd get you know, access to the event. I didn't realize I got all access. That was kind of wild. But they really wanted to people, get people to register to vote. And it was a powerful thing they did. And so I did. I went around asking people to register to vote. And they did. And uh, I went backstage. I met the band. And I, I got to talk to uh, Chris Walla, who was a really awesome dude. And I asked him, how do you succeed in music? How do you make it? And he says, just keep playing music. And I'm like, man, really? But that's the truth. It sounds so simple and wrong. But the reality was he said... You know, look, you, you play in a band, you play shows. People eventually recognize you from being at these shows and small ones, too. Like you, you, there's a show coming up at, well, like we'd like to open. Twelve people are going to be in the audience, but you just keep doing it. Eventually, people recognize your songs. They attach themselves to songs that are good. They share the songs with their friends. More and more people start showing up to your shows. And then he said, eventually, you're the only one left. Everyone else was playing shows has quit. And so when there's a show coming up, like, oh, yeah, Death Cab, I remember. I know I've seen those guys before. Let's go see them. And then you're the one playing the show with the bigger audience because you've been around longer than everybody else. It's really that simple. And I'm like, wow, how did I get started doing all of this? People come into the studio and they're like, how is it so big? How did you do so much? And I'm like, one brick at a time. You know, I had a GoPro 4. I put on top of my monitor. I'd press record, talk for 10 minutes, and then just put it up and edit it a little bit. And I put a video up and I would get like 10 to 20,000 views. And I was like, wow, paid the bills. Then I just kept doing it every single day. Now, here I am. It's kind of wild. I don't even understand. Just one day at a time. That's how we succeed. The simplest thing here is find something you like doing and just keep doing it. Now, the challenge, of course, is people say, I can't afford it. I don't have the money. I'm like, yeah. When I started making YouTube videos, I was just losing money. I got a job working for a big network. Luke Rutkowski said, Not, don't do it. And I was like, yeah, but if I do this for a year or two, I'll make a bunch of money. I'll have savings. I can do whatever I want. Saved up a lot. The first job I saved up, you know, like in the tens of thousands, 
moved to the next job that paid me way more, saved up a, uh, saved up a couple hundred thousand. And I know, I know a lot of people are like, wow, I can't do that. You made so much money, Tim. I'm like, of course. But when I went to Occupy Wall Street, let's stop. When I went to Occupy Wall Street, I had nothing. I had nothing. I had a smartphone. I had worked a job where I was able to buy a smartphone. I filmed. From there, I made a little bit of money. From there, I got some job opportunities. From there, I saved up. From there, I got a bigger opportunity. I saved up. It really was just one brick at a time. You can do it too. And we will. We're going to succeed. Let those who want to march in their death spiral march in their death spiral. It's sad, isn't it? That this is what's going to happen to them. So we try to save them as best we can. But the reality is we succeed when we just build. I'll leave it there. Next segment will be at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.